Snowball, you know how important this man is and the potential. Kamachkele's potential is out of this world. So I think Kamachkele will also be going for a lot of money. So I said, this 82 million bid for Kamachkele is looking a bit, a bit, a bit shy. If I was happily, I'm not selling Kamachkele for anything less than 100 million. Anything, anything less than that, I, I don't even want to consider it. Keith Kekavara Chkelia to Newcastle. I did not really want to believe these rumors when they came out. It actually happened around two, three weeks ago when this really these rumors really started to build up some steam. I waited a bit of time to see what was really going to happen. Nothing's really happened. It looks like those rumors have kind of died down. But anyways, let's look at really what happened and why uh, Kravach Kelly was linked to a move to Newcastle. Without wasting any more time, guys, let's get straight into it. So really big news coming in on the Newcastle front today. Now yeah. we know Newcastle have been going head to head with West Ham for Harvey Barnes. And I still think that Harvey Barnes and Diaby are more likely transport options for Newcastle United yeah. just because of budget and that. But reports are coming out today that Newcastle put in an £82 million bid for Kabaretz Helia, which no doubt Napoli would accept. And if this... Again... They did get Harvey Barnes. I don't know how true these rumours were. That's what we're having a look at it. But if this is true, if Newcastle really offered 82 million, just the thought of Kravachkele coming to the Premier League to this Newcastle team, a team that was already scary. So a team that was already scary last year, a team that almost clinched top three with one of the most exciting... Forget exciting. One of the best players in Europe. Kravachkele is one of the best players in Europe, one of the best wingers in Europe. You put those two together, and Kavachkel is definitely going to light up the Premier League. And doing that, uh, the way sorry Newcastle already play, was definitely going to be a good partnership. So yeah, let, I'll let Alice speak from now on, and we'll see what she's really trying to say. But again, I don't know how true these rumors were, but the fact that they were circulating, they were. It's true. This signing would shake the Premier League. This would be the statement signing where the Man United's and I support Man United's, the Liverpool's, the Arsenal's would be saying Newcastle is serious. Because I've said this in my video last week, a lot of lot of people aren't taking Newcastle seriously. A lot of people say, nah, Newcastle, uh, champion. I am, bro. After what happened last season, I, I, actually, after the takeover, when they bought in Eddie Howe, and when they were about to get relegated, but managed to somehow finish in the middle of the table, I started taking them seriously from the 21-2022 season. I started taking them seriously then. And last year, it was it was proof. It was definitely proof. And if the signing happened, you would have put a bigger stamp on that on their on their ambitions to really take the Premier League by storm. Champions League, their their struggle, they'll come seventh, eighth next season. A lot of people aren't taking Newcastle seriously. Bruno Gimmerz, Tonali, Botman, Trippier, Pope. I mm. think they're all fantastic players. Isaac, an absolutely fantastic player. Callum Wilson got what 18 goals last season, but Kavar it's Hellier. Wow, like Newcastle for me, left back, DM, a winger. Because I think Tonali and Bruno Gimmers are great and they they could play in the pivot together, no doubt in my mind. But a DM behind Tonali and Bruno Gimmers, I think would be insane. But Kavar it's Hellier, Newcastle reportedly made an 82 million pound bid, bid for him. Now, this is giving me Barella vibes. Newcastle linked to Barella, they signed Tonali. <laughs> I think Italian media doesn't have. A reputation of being particularly reliable, but I generally believe Newcastle have an interest in Kabaret's Hellier. I generally believe Newcastle have again. An what in I was alluding to, I don't know how true these rumors were. These were about two weeks ago. The rumors have kind of died down, and Harvey Bands has gone to Newcastle. But I still want to look at it. It's still definitely something interesting. We talk about Kavach Kelia a lot on this channel, and this when this rose up, I would talk about it straight away. But I was like, you know what? I'll give it a second. Let's see how things plan out. I generally believe there's an interest in the player, they'd like the player, but it's about is it possible? But I don't think they've made an 82, pound, 82 million pound bid. They had there was a few rumors linking Kovarts Hill to Newcastle hmm. in the last couple of days, and I think this is a story where tomorrow it's going to be come out and rubbished and no, this isn't happening. This could be Newcastle using this to maybe help them get a deal for Harvey Barnes done, or this could be something that actually Ornstein or someone reliable comes out tomorrow and goes, Yeah, like Newcastle have a genuine interest in Kovarts Hellier. I mean, as I said, Kvart Selya is a brilliant player. He was honestly probably the best winger in Europe last season in terms of an out and... Mm. Mm. I don't 
don't know about the best winger because of Vinicius Jr. Because of Mbappe. I don't know about the best winger. But he's getting to, to those conversations. And that winger, his contributions to Napoli was fantastic. I think he would instantly improve the starting eleven. He does he predominantly would. play Definitely as a left would. wing. He can play right wing though, and he is versatile. But obviously at left wing, they've got Gordon. I think Joel Linton sometimes played left wing for Newcastle. Newcastle fans, correct me if he hasn't. Isaac's obviously played left wing. Isaac was phenomenal. Um, I do think you need more of a right wing because I think yeah, he starts. He starts. He starts. Saint Maximam. I think Saint Maximam's a good player, but I think he's hit and miss for Newcastle. Sometimes Saint I watch him, I'm like this guy's fantastic. Other times I watch him, and it's just he's not consistent enough. So I do think maybe someone like Musa Diaby, who's set to go to Villa, could be smart business. However, Harvey Barnes predominantly plays left wing and Kavaretz Helia, he instantly comes in that left wing for Newcastle. Boom. Do you think right wing is more important, but Kavaretz Helia can easily play right wing. Um, I, I believe that he got 12 goals and 10 assists last season. Some that. people say, oh, that's not the best stats, but he was an eye test player. You know, Eden Hazard never got the stats that Mo Salah got. But when you watch Eden Hazard play and you watch Mo Salah play, a lot of people will say Eden Hazard's better. He gives me... He is better. He not I wouldn't say he's, say he's more of a George Best profile player, but when I've watched him play, he looked absolutely brilliant. He can play on the right, but he does predominantly play on the left wing. He has got low wages, so despite a high fee, you know, you don't have to give him ridiculous wages. I think he could easily move to the Premier League. The fact that Tonali, I know I think he was kind of forced out of AC Milan, but the fact that Tonali made that move to the Premier League, you know, I think a lot of people are looking at like money, Newcastle money, are in the biggest talks. league in the world, the Premier money League talks. is the biggest league in the world. They've got this investment. Eddie Howe's gone from 20th to 12th. And then 12th yeah. to 4th, they are building something. That's what I was saying. Like, I be, when they went from 20th to 12th, which was around the middle of the table, as I said, that's when I be, really began to take them seriously. I was like, wait, Eddie Howe, with this team, he managed to do all of this and they barely spent any money with the team that he already had, the team that was in relegation battles in December? That's crazy. And then coming into the season, of course, we all know what Newcastle did. They're investing in something good. They're in the Champions League. A lot of people are saying this Newcastle are going to be the Man City in a couple of years. I think that's how you attract the Tenales. And I think Kavaretz Helia would definitely go to Newcastle if this was the case, if Napoli would even entertain selling. Because I do think Victor Ossenham will stay at Napoli because of his ridiculous price tag. Whereas Kavaretz Helia won't be quite that expensive. Uh, but because of how... He uh, will be. If Kavaretz Kelly leaves, I would say he was going to leave for the, the exact same amount of money as Ossiman. Because, as we know, it is a beautiful game and goals matter most. And a, a striker, most of the time, will always be more expensive. But Kavachkele is right around the same tier. If you know Bull, you know how important this man is and the potential. Kavachkele's potential is out of this world. So I think Kavachkele will also be going for a lot of money. So I said, this 82 million bid for Kavachkele is looking a bit, a, bit, a bit shy. If I was Napoli, I'm not selling Kavachkele for anything less than 100 million. Anything, anything less than that, I, I don't even want to consider it. Brilliant, he's been. He will be pricey, but he also, what I like about Kovac's Helia is he's very direct. He's someone I'd love at United. Yes, I wish there was true. no point in Man United signing him as a United fan. We've got Anthony, we've got Sancho, even though he's an improvement on them. He averages, I believe, 2.5 shots a game. He's six foot tall. He's 22 years of age. He's been compared as kind of the modern George Best in that sense. And I do think, you know, there is a genuine interest in Kovarek's header from Newcastle. Why would they not be interested in a player of his quality? The Newcastle project is incredibly ambitious. I just don't think they've put a bid in. And I think he does have that slight Barella feel about it. And knowing Newcastle, they're probably signed Coleman or Dembele or Harvey Barnes in a couple of days. And it's got that kind of vibe about it. But there's, there's no doubt the Georgian winger is fantastic, you know. He got, I think he got like seven goals and seven assists in his first 13 appearances for Napoli. Um, he's both footed as well. He's really good with both feet. You know, I'm not an expert on the player, but I did watch a lot of Napoli last season because they were good. To we, we've watched our fair share of Kravach Gilly in this channel. <laughs> we've watched our fair share of Kravach Gilly in this channel. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and he's someone that you just couldn't take your eye off as well. Obviously, only recently joined Napoli, so it, as I said, it would cost Newcastle a lot to sign him. But I have to say, he has probably been one of the biggest rising stars in football this season. In terms Thanks. of, no one really, I wasn't very familiar with him a year ago. Um, I know he got some decent assists in for Georgian European qualifiers, 10 goals, 6 assists. Um, obviously, you know, that's the European qualifiers. It's slightly different. You play teams like Gibraltar. But, you know, they had a good big player to replace. Why did Gibraltar have to, get, have to catch a stray? Why did they have to catch a stray? Like, leave them alone. 
Napoli and Insigne. Insigne was a very important player. And although Napoli changed their system a lot, you know, Cavara Tellier came in, he played left wing and he absolutely fulfilled that position perfectly fine. Uh, he carries the ball forward. He's a good carrier of the ball. He's a good trip of the ball. ball. Uh, he's very direct. He brings One of the, the best of the world. The goal. He's that. someone that comes into Newcastle will be looking to score, looking to bring the ball towards the goal. And as I said, I think his best stat is being two-footed. Um, I did a bit of research on him. Um, and when you watch him play, Dribbling. play and I watched some videos on him, he's effectively a touchline winger and he can create. He's not just a goal scorer. He's a touchline winger. He creates. He sticks out wide. He creates space. And I think in a modern game of football and the way that Newcastle might look to play, this would be really good. I think, you know, Trippier, Kavara, Tele, Bruno Guimaraes, Tonali in the same side would be impressive. And I have to say, you know, fantastic player. Good shot on him. Good dribble on him. Brings the ball forward. Plays out wide. Averages nearly three shots a game. Very good play style. And if Newcastle signed him, that would be unreal. But I have to say, I'm not going to get Newcastle fans too excited, as we know. Yeah. Uh, what Italian media is like. Okay, so pretty much what happened is I don't want to really be wasting any more time on this video because a, it, this video did come out two weeks ago, as, as I said, and Newcastle went on to sign Harvey Barnes. Again, great work from Alice, but pretty much it's not really going to happen. It was just rumours. It is gone. I still wanted to look at it and I wanted to see if the Newcastle interest interest was real. If there was some truth to that, to the, to the um, desire to sign... Kavach Kelia, but it's all gone, which I'm which I'm happy about. It's a W in my books. Kavach Kelia not going to Newcastle, it's a W in my books. Not only because I support United, but also because I want to see what him and Ossiman can do in another year. But anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching until the end. You're much appreciated. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, share. Do all these things to help me grow this channel. And I'll see you guys soon.